a racist police officer assumes a black man driving an expensive car is a criminal and arrests him for no reason. Afterward, the officer realized he has just arrested the captain's son. Officer John Harris had been patrolling the same beat for years. The neighborhood he found himself in tonight was one he knew well, or at least he thought he did. To him, it was a place where trouble brewed beneath the surface and anyone could be hiding something. His training, combined with years of cynical experience, had sharpened his sense of suspicion. But what John Harris couldn't see was how much of that suspicion was born from bias, bias he didn't even recognize in himself. The summer night felt heavy, the air thick with humidity as Harris drove slowly down a dimly lit street. His eyes scanned the sidewalk, narrowing slightly as he passed a group of black teenagers laughing and talking outside a corner store. He gripped the steering wheel a little tighter, his mind jumping to the worst possible conclusions. He wouldn't say it out loud, but a neighborhood like this. His training told him to stay alert. It was nearing the end of his shift, and his thoughts wandered briefly to getting home. But then, as he turned a corner, his gaze snapped back to the road. There it was, an expensive, sleek black sedan, slowly cruising along. It wasn't just the car that caught his attention, it was who was driving it. A young black man, maybe early twenties, casually looking ahead as if he owned the street. Harris's pulse quickened. He knew this neighborhood, and in his mind, someone like that didn't belong behind the wheel of such a car. Not here, not at this time of night. Probably stolen, Harris muttered under his breath reaching for his radio. Dispatch, I've got a possible 1051. Vehicle looks out of place. Gonna check it out. He could already feel the tension rising in his chest, the familiar adrenaline rush that came with suspicion, even though nothing had happened yet. In his mind, it was just a matter of time. The city had been cracking down on stolen cars, and he'd be the one to get this one off the street tonight. As Harris flipped on his lights, the sedan slowed to a stop. The driver, young, black, and dressed well, seemed calm. Too calm, Harris thought. That kind of calm only means one thing, Harris whispered to himself, stepping out of the car. He's hiding something. He approached the car with a stiff posture, his hand already hovering near his holster as he knocked on the window. When the driver rolled it down, Harris could see the young man's clear, confident eyes staring back at him. License and registration, Harris barked, not bothering with pleasantries. He leaned in slightly, already scanning the car's interior. His gut told him something was off, but it wasn't based on anything concrete, just a feeling. The young man, Darren, though Harris didn't know his name yet, reached for his documents calmly. Harris hated that calm. It made him uneasy. Too many years on the force had convinced him that anyone who didn't show a little fear had something to hide. As Darren handed him the documents, Harris's mind was already made up. There was no way a young black man in this neighborhood could be driving a car like that without trouble following. With barely a glance at the papers, Harris stepped back toward his cruiser. His heart was already racing, and he knew he was going to find a reason, any reason, to pull this kid in. Darren Johnson sat behind the wheel, his hands lightly gripping the steering wheel, his mind at ease. The gentle hum of his car's engine filled the otherwise quiet night. He loved driving his car, an achievement he was proud of, something he had worked hard for. It wasn't about flaunting wealth or status. It was a symbol of his independence, his success, and the effort he had put in to get where he was. He had spent the day visiting a friend and was on his way home. The neighborhood wasn't unfamiliar. He'd driven through it before, but it wasn't where he lived. Darren's father, Captain Marcus Johnson, had taught him a lot about being careful, about understanding how the world worked for someone like him. His father had always made sure Darren knew the rules, rules that people like Officer Harris took for granted, but Darren had to live by. He spotted the police car in his rearview mirror its headlights glowing ominously as it followed him down the quiet street. 
Darren's stomach tightened instinctively. He glanced at the speedometer. He wasn't speeding. His car was in perfect condition. He wasn't doing anything wrong, but still, he knew what was coming. The blue and red lights flicked on behind him. Great, Darren muttered to himself. His father had warned him about this exact situation. No matter how well you behave, no matter how much you try to fit into the rules of society, some people would see his skin color first and make assumptions. His mind ran through everything his dad had taught him. Stay calm, don't argue, comply with every request. Don't give them any reason to escalate. Darren's heart pounded as he pulled over to the side of the road, his mind racing through all the things that could go wrong. He had done nothing wrong, but that didn't always matter. He took a deep breath, forcing his hands to stay steady as he turned off the engine. Looking at his reflection in the rearview mirror, Darren felt the weight of the situation. It wasn't just another traffic stop. He had seen too many stories, too many lives lost in similar moments. His father's voice echoed in his mind. Stay calm, son. Don't give them a reason. The officer, a tall, broad man, approached the car with a stiffness that put Darren even more on edge. He could see the tension in the cop's shoulders, the way his hand hovered too close to his holster. License and registration, the officer snapped. Darren nodded silently, moving slowly to reach for his glove compartment. His heart thudded as he handed over the documents. He knew the drill, but that didn't make it any less terrifying. Every movement felt like it was being scrutinized, judged. He looked up at the officer, who barely glanced at the documents before stepping back to his cruiser without a word. Darren exhaled a shaky breath, his eyes glancing around the neighborhood. It was eerily quiet, the air still and oppressive. The officer's behavior was cold, mechanical, and Darren knew that the cop had already made up his mind about him before he even saw his face. This is ridiculous, Darren thought. I've done nothing wrong. He leaned back in his seat, trying to stay calm. The irony wasn't lost on him. He was the son of a high-ranking police officer, but that didn't matter here. To this cop, he was just another black man in a nice car, a suspicious target. Darren's mind wandered to his father, Captain Marcus Johnson. His father had worked his way up through the ranks, earning respect, but he had never been blind to the harsh realities of the world. He had always prepared Darren for this moment, but knowing how to handle it didn't take away the sting. It didn't erase the frustration that no matter how successful, how careful or how polite he was, he would still be seen as a threat. Minutes passed, but they felt like hours. Darren kept his eyes forward, willing himself to stay composed. The cop was taking too long. This wasn't just a routine check anymore. It was something else. Darren knew what was coming. His heart sank as the officer finally returned to his car, his face unreadable. Step out of the vehicle the cop demanded. Darren froze for a second, his pulse quickening. Why? he asked, trying to keep his voice steady. But the officer's hand moved closer to his holster again, and Darren could see where this was heading. I said, step out of the vehicle! Harris barked louder this time. Darren swallowed his frustration and opened the door slowly. He could feel his hands trembling as he stepped onto the pavement. It was always like this, Everything magnified because of what he looked like. Turn around, hands on the car, the officer ordered, already moving toward him. Darren complied, his back stiff as the officer frisked him roughly. He bit his tongue, trying to hold in his anger. But the feeling of being treated like a criminal, despite doing nothing wrong, was suffocating. He could hear the hum of traffic in the distance, but here, in this moment, it felt like the world had narrowed down to just him, the officer, and the weight of expectations pressing down on him. When the cold metal of handcuffs locked around his wrists, a wave of disbelief crashed over him. Darren's chest tightened as Officer Harris yanked his arm, the metal cuffs biting into his skin. The officer had barely spoken a word, his actions doing all the talking. Darren was being handled like a criminal. His movements forced, 
shoved into the back of the squad car with unnecessary roughness. His mind raced, trying to piece together how everything had gone wrong so fast. But the pit in his stomach told him it didn't matter. To Harris, it was simple. Darren was guilty the moment he laid eyes on him. The door slammed with a jarring thud, cutting off the outside world. The interior of the police car felt cold and sterile, a sharp contrast to the heat simmering in Darren's chest. His wrists throbbed under the tight cuffs, and he shifted uncomfortably, trying to find a position that didn't add to the pain. The reality of the moment was sinking in, heavier and heavier with each passing second. Outside, a small crowd began to gather near the gas station, their eyes flicking toward the squad car. Darren could feel their stares through the tinted windows, an invisible pressure bearing down on him. He wasn't just some guy being arrested. He was a black man in the back of a police car, and that meant something. To them, it told a whole story. He could see it in their faces, the judgment, the assumptions. Some stood with their arms crossed, shaking their heads as if they'd seen this scene play out a thousand times before. Others whispered to each other, stealing glances at the squad car, their eyes filled with that familiar mix of curiosity and condemnation. Darren had grown used to those looks, but it didn't make it any less infuriating. It didn't make the knot in his stomach any smaller. This is what they see, Darren thought bitterly, his jaw tightening. A criminal, just because I'm black. He tried to calm his breathing, but the frustration was too thick in his throat. He wasn't just angry at Harris, or the people watching from the sidewalk. He was angry at the whole system that made this moment possible. He thought about his father's voice in his head, warning him about encounters like this, telling him to stay calm, to keep his cool, no matter how unjust the situation. But how was he supposed to stay calm when everything about this screamed that it wasn't fair? As Officer Harris leaned against the door, radioing in, Darren's eyes flicked to the police radio crackling to life. The officer's expression was blank, as if what he had just done meant nothing more than following protocol. There was no concern in Harris's face, no hesitation, just the cold efficiency of a man who thought he had caught someone in the wrong. Darren's mind flashed back to how quickly things had escalated. He hadn't even had a chance to explain, to clarify why he was there, or that he was doing absolutely nothing suspicious. But Harris hadn't needed an explanation. Darren had been guilty the second the officer saw him. His skin, his clothes, his presence in the wrong neighborhood. It had all been enough. The streetlights flickered overhead, casting long shadows over the scene, and Darren caught a glimpse of himself in the rearview mirror. His reflection stared back at him, but it didn't look like him anymore. All he saw was someone stripped of their dignity, reduced to nothing but a suspect. The exhaustion weighed heavily on him, a feeling all too familiar. No matter what I do, no matter how good I am, this is what I'm always going to be in their eyes. The longer he sat there, the more he felt the helplessness grow. It wasn't just the cuffs that made him feel trapped, it was the whole situation. The feeling that he was stuck in a system where he'd always have to prove his innocence where his every action would be scrutinized more harshly than anyone else's. The cuffs were just a physical reminder of the restraints society had placed on him long ago. His father's words echoed in his mind, reminding him to hold his head high, to never let the world see him falter. But right now, that felt impossible. How could he hold his head high when he was being treated like this? How could he feel any sense of pride when his hands were bound behind his back, his body shoved into the back of a police car, all because someone saw him as a threat? Through the tinted glass, Darren saw the bystanders still standing there, their faces etched with the same assumptions he had grown accustomed to. None of them knew him, none of them cared about his story. To them, he was just another black man in handcuffs, another scene to gawk at, Another moment to pass by without a second thought. One man in the crowd looked particularly smug, leaning over to whisper something to the person next to him, shaking his head as if to say, of course. Just another one of them. 
Darren's fists clenched tighter, his nails digging into his palms. He wanted to scream, to demand they see him for who he really was, not just as someone to fear, not just as a stereotype. But screaming wouldn't change anything. No one here would care about his story, about who he was or what he had achieved. The door to the front seat opened, and Officer Harris climbed inside, his face set in the same cold, detached expression. Darren's eyes met the officers in the rearview mirror, but there was no recognition, no understanding, just the quiet confidence of a man who thought he'd done his job. To Harris, Darren was just another problem solved, another criminal in custody. The car engine rumbled to life, and Darren felt the vibrations beneath him, the sound echoing the numbness that had begun to settle in his chest. This was how it always was, how it always would be. No matter how much progress his father made, no matter how many barriers Darren broke through, moments like this would always be waiting for him. As the car pulled away from the curb, Darren glanced back at the crowd one last time, their faces blurred under the streetlights, but the weight of their judgment lingered. It always would. The tension in the air was thick as Captain Johnson stood in front of Officer Harris, his eyes burning with quiet fury. Darren remained by his father's side, watching as Harris shifted uncomfortably, trying to reconcile what had just happened. The gravity of his mistake was starting to sink in, but the question now was what his actions would cost him. Captain Johnson crossed his arms, his posture firm, a stark contrast to the shrinking figure of Officer Harris. You arrested my son without probable cause, the captain stated, his voice cold and steady. You didn't even give him a chance to explain himself. Harris opened his mouth, but no words came out at first. He glanced at Darren, then back to the captain, as if he were searching for a way to justify his actions. Sir, I... I thought he matched the description of... Of what? A suspect. Captain Johnson's voice cut through the excuse like a knife. Because he was black. Because he was standing in the wrong place at the wrong time. The captain's eyes flashed with controlled rage. You didn't think twice before putting him in cuffs and throwing him in the back of your car like a criminal. Harris swallowed hard, the weight of his error pressing down on him. It wasn't like that, Captain, he stammered. I made a mistake. Darren had been quiet up until now, but the boiling frustration inside him could no longer be contained. A mistake, he echoed, stepping forward. That's all this is to you. Harris looked at Darren, but couldn't hold his gaze for long. Darren's face was a mask of hurt and anger, and his words were heavy with the weight of years of discrimination. You didn't arrest me because I was suspicious. You arrested me because I was black. Darren continued, his voice steady, but his pain unmistakable. You didn't even bother to ask what I was doing there. You just saw my skin and assumed the worst. The silence that followed was suffocating. Harris had no real defense for his actions. He knew Darren was right. The captain was right. And the consequences of his unconscious bias were laid bare before him. Captain Johnson stepped forward again, his gaze piercing. You should have known better, but this isn't just about you. This is about a system that's been broken for a long time. A system that allows people like you to make these mistakes and walk away without any real consequences. Harris, realizing the gravity of his situation, looked between the father and son, his voice faltering. Captain, I... I'm sorry. Darren's father held up a hand, silencing Harris. Sorry isn't enough. What you've done can't be undone. You humiliated my son. You profiled him. You treated him like a criminal because of his skin color. That's not something a simple apology can fix. The weight of the captain's words hung in the air, and Harris seemed to shrink even more, but Darren's eyes stayed locked on him. This wasn't just about punishment for the officer. It was about a larger, systemic issue that Harris represented. Darren's heart pounded as he felt the exhaustion of years of seeing men like Harris get away with this, of seeing apologies that never led to real change. But his father's next words were unexpected. You will be disciplined for your actions, Officer Harris. 
Captain Johnson continued, his voice hard as steel. But more than that, you're going to face what you did today. I'll see to it that you go through training that opens your eyes to the racism you've been blind to. You're not just going to get a slap on the wrist and walk away. You're going to learn. Harris blinked, confusion and relief flickering across his face. He had expected worse. Yes, sir, he managed to mutter. Captain Johnson turned to Darren, his expression softening for the first time since the confrontation began. This won't fix what happened, he said quietly, but we need to address it at its root. This isn't just about one bad cop. It's about a system that needs to change. Darren nodded, his emotions still raw, but the fire in his chest dimming slightly. His father was right. This wasn't just about Harris. It was about addressing the deeply ingrained racism that allowed this situation to happen in the first place. Darren had felt the sting of prejudice his whole life, and today was just another reminder of the uphill battle they still faced. Just then, another police car pulled up. Two officers stepped out and approached cautiously. One of them looked at Captain Johnson, then at Darren, recognizing the tension in the air. Captain Johnson, we've been informed of the situation. Captain Johnson gave a curt nod. I want Officer Harris taken to the station. He'll be debriefed and face disciplinary measures. As the other officers escorted a stunned Harris away, Darren's eyes followed him, feeling the mix of emotions still swirling inside him. Relief, anger, exhaustion. It was all there, tangled together. But in that moment, as the officers led Harris away, Darren couldn't help but feel that justice had been done in some small way. But it wasn't enough, not yet. Captain Johnson placed a hand on his son's shoulder, grounding him. This fight isn't over, he said softly, but we'll keep pushing. We'll keep fighting for a world where this doesn't happen. Darren looked at his father, nodding again, his resolve strengthening. Yeah, he agreed. We will. The world wasn't perfect. There was still so much work to be done. But in that moment, Darren knew that they wouldn't stop until real change was made. The consequences for Officer Harris were just the beginning. The fight for justice was far from over. Darren sits on the hard bench of the holding cell, the weight of the night settling on his shoulders like an anchor. His mind is racing, but his body feels drained exhausted by a lifetime of fighting battles he never asked for. He knows this story too well, the suspicion, the judgment, the way people look at him like he's already guilty just because of the color of his skin. He's been here before, not in a cell, but in moments that feel just like this, helpless, angry, and defeated. The fact that his father, Captain Marcus Johnson, wears a badge and uniform has never shielded him from this reality. Darren's father fought his way to the top of the force, believing that he could make things better from within, that he could bend the system toward justice by sheer will. But Darren knows that no matter how high his father climbs, he'll still be treated like just another black man when the uniform comes off. As he sits there, Darren's thoughts drift to his father. He remembers how his dad used to tell him that the badge was a symbol of hope, that if he worked hard enough, he could help change the way people think. But tonight, all Darren can think about is how little that badge has done to protect him. It's like his father's achievements and sacrifices have been for nothing, wasted on a system that refuses to see them as anything more than the stereotypes it's built upon. How many times, Dad? How many times do we have to prove we belong? That we're not a threat? That we're not what they think we are? He thinks about the conversations he's had with his father, the arguments about staying calm and complying when stopped by the police. His father always said it was for his safety, that he needed to play the game smart. But what's the point of playing smart when the rules are rigged? What good is a strategy when the other side refuses to see your humanity? Darren's frustration isn't just about this one night. It's about all the nights, all the looks, all the quiet judgments he's had to endure. It's the slow burn of realizing that no matter how much his father achieves, no matter how hard he tries to change things, 
It'll never be enough to shield him from the racism that runs so deep, it's practically in the air they breathe. His thoughts shift back to the arrest, to the way Officer Harris looked at him. Not as a person, but as a problem to be dealt with. He wonders if Harris even knows how much damage a look like that can do, how it makes you feel small, like you're nothing more than the worst things he thinks you are. Darren knows his father believes in the system, that he's trying to fix it from the inside. But tonight, sitting in this cell, he feels the sting of betrayal, not just from the world outside, but from the very institution his father dedicated his life to. He loves his dad, respects him even, but he can't help questioning whether all of his father's efforts have made a dent in the world they're up against. You gave them your loyalty, Dad. But where's ours? Where's our justice, our dignity? The thought makes his chest tighten. He's proud of his father, proud of what he's tried to build, but he's tired of the hypocrisy. He's tired of playing by rules that were never made for him. And he's tired of having to fight for a future where his worth isn't measured by his skin. Darren looks up, his eyes burning with a mix of anger and resolve. He knows that this fight isn't over. But tonight, he's not sure if he's more furious at the system that's failed him, or the fact that even his father's best efforts can't seem to change a damn thing. Captain Marcus Johnson stood outside the small, dimly lit interrogation room, his face a mask of calm that barely concealed the storm brewing inside him. He took a deep breath, then another, as if trying to contain the fire that threatened to consume him from within. This confrontation wasn't just about his son. It was about every unspoken frustration, every sacrifice, every battle he'd fought to change a system that seemed hell-bent on remaining the same. When he finally entered the room, Officer John Harris looked up from his seat. The officer's face was a mix of confusion, defensiveness, and something else. Fear, maybe. Marcus shut the door softly behind him, the click of the latch sounding louder than it should have in the tense silence. Do you have any idea what you've done tonight? Marcus said, his voice low and steady, yet carrying the weight of a father's rage. He didn't shout. He didn't need to. Each word was sharp enough to cut through steel. Do you understand the damage you've caused? Harris shifted uncomfortably in his seat. He opened his mouth, then closed it again, like a fish out of water searching for air. Finally, he spoke, his voice tinged with the defensive tone of a man clinging to his pride. Captain, I was just doing my job. The car looked suspicious, and the driver, the driver was my son, Marcus interrupted, each word striking like a hammer. My son, who you arrested without cause, who you decided in that split second was a criminal, not because of anything he did, but because of what he looked like, because he's black. Harris's face went pale, his eyes flickering with a mix of shock and denial. He tried to hold on to his composure to convince himself that he had acted by the book, that he wasn't in the wrong. I wasn't trying to be racist, Captain, Harris stammered. I was following procedure. Procedure? Marcus's voice was incredulous, a bitter laugh escaping his lips. You think this is about procedure? You looked at my son, and all you saw was a threat. You didn't see a young man with a future. You didn't see the son of a colleague. You saw a black man in an expensive car, and you made your decision right then and there. Harris swallowed hard, his face now lined with doubt, as if Marcus's words were chiseling away at the defences he'd built up over years on the force. Marcus took a step closer, his gaze never wavering. This isn't just about Darren, he said, his voice softer but no less intense. This is about the lie we tell ourselves in this uniform. The lie that we are protectors of justice when we're often the ones who enforce prejudice. You see, it's not your intent that matters, Harris. It's the impact of your actions. The silence in the room was suffocating now. Harris shifted his gaze to the floor, his hands clenched in his lap. For a moment, Marcus thought he saw a flicker of something in the officer's eyes. Regret, maybe, or the beginnings of shame. 
You think you're doing your job, that you're protecting people, Marcus continued. But who are you protecting when you target kids like my son? Who are you really keeping safe when you let your biases dictate your every move? Because all you're doing is protecting the lie. That some lives are more dangerous, more criminal, more guilty, simply because of the color of their skin. Harris looked up then, and Marcus could see it. The raw, naked confusion of a man who was beginning to realize he'd been on the wrong side of something much bigger than himself. He opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. He was lost in a sea of doubt, a man finally confronting the monster that had lived quietly in his own shadow. Marcus's voice softened, but his eyes never lost their fire. You have a choice to make, Harris. You can keep hiding behind that badge, pretending that your biases don't exist. Or you can face them, head on, and see them for the poison they are. Because every time you look at my son, or any young black man, and see only a threat, you're not just failing them. You're failing yourself. You're failing all of us. He let the words hang in the air, heavy and unyielding. There was nothing more to say. He turned and walked out of the room, leaving Harris alone with his thoughts and the echoes of a truth he could no longer ignore. The station felt heavier as Marcus left the interrogation room, the confrontation with Harris still echoing in his mind. He made his way to the holding area, where Darren sat with his head bowed low. The sight of his son, shoulders slumped and eyes hollow, sent a fresh wave of anger through him, but he swallowed it down. Now wasn't the time to let his emotions consume him. Darren, Marcus said softly as he approached. Darren's head snapped up, and for a moment, the pain in his eyes was like a dagger to Marcus's chest. It was the look of a young man who'd seen the world's ugliness up close and could never unsee it. They're letting you go, Marcus continued, forcing a smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. You're coming home. Darren stood slowly, his movements heavy with exhaustion, not just from the hours spent in that cell, but from the lifelong weight of fighting the same battle over and over. It doesn't matter, Dad, Darren said his voice raw and low. You know that, right? It doesn't matter if I'm your son or some random guy on the street. To them, I'm just another black kid who doesn't belong. Marcus opened his mouth to argue, to say something, anything that might soothe the hurt in his son's voice. But he couldn't. How could he tell Darren he was wrong when he knew his son was right? Even with all his years in the force, all his efforts to change things from within, he couldn't shield his own son from the world's twisted perceptions. You're right, Marcus said finally, his voice barely more than a whisper. I've fought my whole life trying to make a difference from the inside. And tonight, I was reminded just how far we still have to go. But that doesn't mean we stop fighting. Darren's eyes narrowed, searching his father's face for something. Hope, reassurance, a reason to believe that this struggle wasn't in vain. And what do we do, Dad? He asked, his voice cracking. Just keep hoping things will change while we're treated like this. What's the point if even you can't protect me? Marcus took a step closer, putting a hand on Darren's shoulder, the weight of his touch both a comfort and a burden. The point is that we have to keep pushing, Darren. Not just for us, but for every kid who comes after you. We're not just fighting for the present. We're fighting for a future where this doesn't happen anymore. Darren's face softened, but his eyes were still filled with doubt. I'm tired, Dad, he said. Tired of being strong all the time. Tired of being seen as a threat first and a human being second. I know, son, Marcus said, his own voice cracking now. I'm tired too, but that's why we need to keep going. So that one day, Another father doesn't have to look his son in the eye and see the same pain I see in yours. They stood there for a moment, father and son, bound by their shared struggle, but separated by the stark reality of their different experiences. Marcus, the seasoned captain who'd climbed the ranks only to find that some things never change, and Darren, the young man forced to confront the brutal truth that even his father's position couldn't shield him from prejudice. 
As they left the station, the other officers watched them in silence. Some averted their eyes, unwilling to confront the truth of what had happened. Others stared, their faces betraying a range of emotions, from guilt to defiance, to something that might have been empathy. Harris stood apart from the crowd, his face unreadable, still grappling with the weight of Marcus's words. Outside, the night was cool and still, a stark contrast to the turmoil inside the precinct. Darren looked up at the sky, the stars distant and indifferent. Do you think he'll change, Dad? He asked, nodding back toward the building where Harris stood. I don't know, Marcus replied honestly. Change is hard, especially when it means facing things about yourself you don't want to see. But I hope so, for his sake, and for all of ours. Darren nodded, a small, weary smile tugging at his lips. I guess hope's all we've got, right? Marcus pulled him into a hug, holding his son tight as if he could shield him from all the ugliness in the world. Hope in each other, he said, and sometimes that's enough to keep fighting. As they walked away from the station, side by side, they knew that their battle was far from over. But for now, they had each other, and in a world that often seemed intent on tearing them down, that was something worth holding on to.